Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG. Hey, Mr. TIG, what are you doing? Uh, carry on, I don't know. She came with me. Oh, okay. It, it's the voice for my, for my videos. I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, we're in part three of a segment of how to, basically, how do you set up your welding machine? You know, we talked about the, uh, the details of, of the, the foot control, the thumb control, TIG torches, gas, that sort of thing. Yep. But, you know, we did DC welding. Right, where, where right. I, and that was fun. Uh, so we're, we're getting ready to turn this machine to AC welding. Okay. You know, so if you happen to have an AC welding machine, just know that you have to hit that function AC, alternating current. Now, most machines will automatically go into a continuous frequency, and, and what that means is that you can hear the AC running all the time. Right, it has right. a totally different it's, sound it's to it. Different sound, yeah. Now, one of the things on the newer machines, and I'm saying most of the machines in the last 15 or 20 years have a, uh, have a cleaning action on right. them. And you were asking me earlier about prepping this aluminum. Right, and, right. are we going to clean it? Are we going to wire brush it? or? grind it or anything? Well, in AC, we can weld aluminum and magnesium right. with it. And, and those are the two primary alloys. Now, if you take a look at this aluminum, it's got an oxide layer right. on there. And even, right. even though this, this layer is invisible, it's there. It's, it's like an iron clad. It melts at about 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Now, the aluminum itself will start melting at 1,200 degrees. So we've got a little physics problem here. Right. Now, the machines, with their, their new cleaning action, and it's a balance control. You'll hear this square wave balance control. And you can turn the knob or push the knob, and it'll say more cleaning or less cleaning. Right. You have to determine how dirty it is. So a good starting point is to take a look at your material. Visually, it's clean. doesn't have any oils on it. So let's start off with a balance. And you set your machine accordingly, and as you start welding, if you find that your tungsten is balling up too much, then you've got too much cleaning action. Absolutely too much too cleaning. Much, too much positive. Too much positive. Okay. And, and that just forces your tungsten to disappear okay. back into your torch. So okay. take a look at your machine, and you may have to adjust down and go a little bit more negative. Right. In fact, most of the time, I'm running at about 70% negative. Wow. And the best way to tell, and we're going to have you run some well samples here, is, is make your bead on plate and add your filler material and look right adjacent to the weld, your heat affected zone, right. and you need cleaning only for a small section outside the heat affected zone. So if you're bombarding this and you're getting one inch of cleaning, that's probably too much. That's too much. Yeah, that's too much. But now we're, we're going to weld this without any kind of cleaning, any kind of prep to it. If you're actually doing you know, some real work with it, if you're actually welding on an aluminum piece for, you know, for money or for sculpture or whatever, don't you have to clean it? You don't have to clean it, no. That's the beauty of it. The, huh. uh, the, the old fashioned way was you used to have to scrape it or file it or wire brush it. Right. And in, in many cases, what was happening is you were wire brushing and all you were doing was polishing the oxides. Right. They weren't getting removed. Right. You thought they were removed because visually they looked, looked better. They looked sure. better. Huh. But this machine actually bombards it. Well, and it gets rid of it while you're welding. So where does it go? It, it actually disappears. It vaporizes. And because you have argon shielding on it, it vaporizes and it's clean. Huh. I'll be and so, so you can do this. Interesting. And I'm, I'm going to have you do this just for fun. Okay. We're going to do a bead on plate, and you're going to weld with no filler at all. Right. And all you're going to do is show the bombardment taking right. place. Okay. Now, the one thing that the machine won't do is if you have oils on here, it doesn't get rid of the oil, so you still have to get rid of that. Right, right. So uh, let's get our gear on and uh, cool. get started. Cool, let's spark up. Okay, you've got, uh, you've got about 100, and, 100 to 110 amps, I would guess. You've got a nice fusion line. You can see the cleaning action pretty wide on each side of the puddle, so you're getting more than adequate cleaning. And you're getting near the end, you have to taper off slowly, slowly, slowly. He tries to build up very quickly on aluminum. As you can see, you get to the end, the heat yeah. is, it's all, yeah. it's all yeah. caught up with yeah, you. Yeah, it got, got a lot hotter at the end. Yeah. Yep. 
and that's just a characteristic of aluminum. Right. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask the question, is aluminum harder to weld? It really isn't, it's just different. Right. You know, and once you get used to it, some people actually like aluminum better than other materials. It, it seems a lot quicker than steel. It, uh, I, I tell you what's gonna be important, we're gonna do another weld, and we're gonna use filler material. Okay. And uh, one of the things I really want the, the viewers out there to notice is that you, you actually establish a puddle. Right. Very, before, very clean. Before. Oh, it, and it's yeah. very precise, you can right. see it. it right. You know, it's like a mirror. Right. Then you can start adding filler. Right. And uh, right. don't jump the gun. Don't jump the gun. That's that's probably the number one made mistake. Right. So I've never gonna, done that. <laughs> got uh, one sixteenth diameter filler. It's forty forty three. Okay. Pretty pretty okay. common. Pretty cool. generic. And uh, anyway, let's uh, let's see your technique. The cleaning looks good on this. Okay, so you got you got a puddle started. You're dabbing, dab, dab. Very nice, very nice. Perfect. Good technique. There's plenty of cleaning action in there. It's uh, it's really not a bad setting. Still at about what 100, 110 amps. And uh, yeah, you're starting to to get near the end. So I always like to back off slow and slow. So you you, you had a good repetition. Your right. your weld width right. is is just right. Yeah. I mean it's very very consistent. Right. Now the one thing with aluminum, you may start over here at, at 110 amps. Right because the, the part's still chilled. Right. And as you get to the end, the heat's caught up to you. Right. And when it catches up to you, you have to back, back off, off and adjust back to off. it. Right. Otherwise, you see your weld getting wider, wider and wider and wider. And wider and flatter. You know? right. and, that, and that's a huge difference between right. steels, DC welding, right. and right. aluminum welding. Right. Uh, now, when we get to the end like this, when you get to the end of a part, uh, one thing to keep in mind is hot, short cracking. Uh, now, that's where you're going to have most of your problems, right at the end. So it's okay to add just a little bit extra filler material and back out of it as slowly as possible. Now, the one thing I noticed, and this is a huge difference between the, the big industrial machines and the, um, I call them light duty machines, is the, the precision is not exactly the same. And, and when I say that is I can typically taper off without leaving any kind of a crater. Right. And, and that yeah. one, you reach a certain point on your foot control and it stopped. It stopped. You know, so yeah. it, it didn't give you the opportunity. Right. Right. Now, you can overcome that. And once you get used to the machine, you can dab a little extra filler material okay. and, yeah. ba and back off. Right. But uh, you'll, you'll see some of the industrial machines, they'll taper off as low as 5 amps. Wow. And, and that's, that's pretty critical when you okay. get into the x-ray quality type right. welding. Right. But this is, this is a great job. Yeah. You know, for an artist to know how to aluminum weld, I mean, that's, uh, that's saying and, something. And being self-taught. Yeah. Yeah, so... And you did that left-handed, so I, I admire you for that. <laughs> and uh, and I, I really want to thank The Voice for, for coming on it's this It's amazing show. how she shows up every now and again. It, it, it yeah. is. It is. Well, listen, thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. And I'm Kevin Curran. She doesn't have a name. It's The Voice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's do it again. This is fun. <laughs> yeah, really. We're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> the voice ought to shout out. You're not doing anything, wife! <laughs>